The next question that came through was, your idea about having 50% of time spent teaching and 50% on feedback is provocative. How much of feedback or teaching would you suggest peer education comprising, and where would you put peer education, teaching, or feedback? This is a great question. Um, so I was sort of figuratively speaking uh, when I, when I uh, gave the example uh, where it was 50-50 of teaching and feedback. And I, and I said that mainly because when, when you think about teaching, uh, that's a one way, right? If I'm teaching and talking like I'm doing here, it is a one way communication of information. What's just as important is the feedback that I'm getting from the learners, um, the feedback I'm giving them, the product they're creating, and so on. So when we think about teaching, it's about teaching, learning, and feedback. And when you look at it from that teaching and learning standpoint, you have the teaching aspect that goes this way, and then the feedback that can come back the other way. So it was more meant to illustrate that point of that teaching is more than just dumping of knowledge, that there's, there's some feedback loop there. But this peer education question brings up a really interesting point. And to talk about that, um, I, I think when we think about formative assessment, when we think about using rubrics and giving feedback, peer assessment's an absolutely awesome way to, to do this, right? So if you give a rubric to a student and say you need to give feedback, we're accomplishing a few things. The student needs to interact with the rubric. They need to understand the rubric to be able to give feedback to the best of their knowledge. And then the learner is getting feedback from somebody who's co-constructing knowledge with them. So they understand that there's sort of a give and take and that both parties are actually learning during this process. So to answer the part of the question that said, where would you put peer education, teaching, and feedback? I would actually put it in both. Um, because to, to really answer this question, I want to bring up this concept. Uh, Mickey Chi from Arizona, Arizona State University, I think she's at ASU, uh, has this, uh, this construct or this model called the ICAP framework. And ICAP stands for uh, Interactive, Constructive, Active, and Passive. And, and it, 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 it's really valuable when we think about creating an active classroom, but in terms of peer education, this, this really comes, comes into play. This idea of the I in interactive in Mickey Chi's framework is two classmates who are co-constructing knowledge through active participation. And that is, if I have a peer who's sitting next to me and we're working through a problem, we're talking and we're doing something, the fact that I'm offering something, this person's ingesting it, thinking about it, and then offering me something uh, that I'm saying, oh, I never quite thought about it that way. Right? We're, so there's teaching going on there. I, I'm seeing that I have gaps. They're seeing that they have gaps. And the feedback is the discussion, well, have you thought about it this way? Have you thought about it that way? And so this idea that we have this interactive, um, if we have this interaction between the students really does some teaching for us. It does some feedback for us. And I think that the fact that the students are co-creating knowledge in that way really speaks to creating an active classroom and doing some good things with that. So the last part of this question that I want to address is this idea of time-based. Um, again, I realize that people are very busy. Professors are very busy. There's not a lot of time to give the, 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 the substantive feedback that we need to give them. Um, so this idea of peer feedback and peer learning is very enticing for feedback and rubrics and that sort of thing for a couple reasons, and that is, um, well, one, we can combine, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, that we're combining teaching and feedback given to the students. The feedback is actually directed at the student level. So the feedback that one peer is giving the other and vice versa is really directed at that person's interpretation of these things. Um, so we're killing two birds with one stone right here. We are saving a little bit of time because there's some level of, of feedback that can be given in these discussions, especially when you give them questions to answer. Now. Obviously, a professor is going to need to float around a little bit, maybe interject in groups to make sure they're on track and listen for a little bit. And this isn't bad, right? If we have, if we have 40 students in class and they're paired up or tripped up, um, you only have what, 20, 10, 15, whatever the numbers are, uh, groups to actually monitor around. And in a, an activity of 15 or 20 minutes, it's actually easy to do. And then after the fact that they've discussed and talked uh, and worked some things out, they're allowed to ask questions uh, of you so you, that you can address them a little bit more specifically there. But I, I really like the idea of, of, of peer teaching, peer learning, and peer feedback. And, and by giving them that rubric um, to work on a problem together or something, you're actually also training them how to use that rubric and apply it to their own work that they might be doing for assignments outside of this group context.